we're going to talk about how I made 100k coins in seconds in NHL 20. This is a continuation of my first video, How to Make Coins in NHL 20, which talked about all the different basics, everything that you need to know to begin making coins. A lot of people love how I use the Mitch Marner card in my thumbnail just because of how he held out on his contract to get the most money. Didn't want to mention that the first time, but now that I brought it up, there it is. This time, we have Ilya Kovalchuk, a member of Team Rocket, as he scored 41 goals in the 03-04 season. He tied with two other players to win the Rocket Richard Trophy. Anyway, let's get into the video because I'm sure you're dying to know how I made 100k coins in a little uh, seconds. So I'm going to show you how it went from this to this. 82 to 83 overall. Holy crap, what an improvement. Seriously though, it's the coin stash. Went up by about 700k. And before I begin, I do want to tell you guys I don't spend any money on this game outside of purchasing the game. These coins are entirely free to play. So hopefully with these videos, you guys can also make that amount of coins. First things first are these gold collectibles. The day was Friday, September 27th, right before the Fantasy Hockey NHL event dropped. I came home and what I did was I just scooped up as many of these gold collectibles that I could, as cheap as they are, 37 to 40k, in anticipation of the new event that's going to be because these gold collectibles look like they're going to be used for every hut event. Notice how at the end of that clip, I had 32k coins, not enough for a gold collectible. I actually went out and sold my card at a cheap price instantly just so I can get another gold collectible. And so in anticipation of the event, I threw these collectibles up on the auction house for about 50k, giving myself a 10k profit minus tax per collectible, so that's a good like 50k or so that I made there. I threw another one up for 60k just in case if the event was really good, well I'd make more money. While a lot of gold collectibles were purchased, wasn't that good. So that's one idea on how to make coins. Another one is I was looking through carts specifically, ones that have an 86 overall rating or higher, and look, their prices are all fairly high. Something that stood out to me was this Rob Blake card, an 86 overall, and there were just so many cards that were going for about 30k of his. Nobody wanted Rob Blake at the time. And it makes sense. He's a slow card. He can't shoot very well, but he's got great defensive stats and he's big, so he's a great shutdown D-man. So what's crazy to me is this 86 overall card was going for the cost of like an 84 overall card at the time. He was still in packs, so people were ripping him and not enough people were buying him. What I did was I bought two of them and I threw them into my collection and waited a week and then I sold them for 60k when his price ended up increasing. So that's like a 60k profit minus tax just from holding on to cards until after they're out of packs. Sometimes my investments weren't so great. When it comes to this Matt Murray card for 50k, he's an 86 overall goalie. I mean, it was the cheapest one out there by a large margin. So I tried to sell him for 60, 70k, and then his price ended up plummeting to 25k, and so I took a loss there. So this idea doesn't work with goalies. However, just know it's okay to take a loss. Also know when to take that loss. Don't hold on to the card forever, because then Team of the Year comes out and this card's worthless. All right, now I didn't want to make you guys wait too long for my biggest money maker, which is pretty much how I got the title of my video. These fantasy hockey cards are amazing for making coins. To the uneducated hut consumer, they look at these 78 to 82 overall cards and they're like, this card isn't special. And they'll list them up on the auction house for next to nothing, or at least just not what they're worth. The actual prices are, well, you can see them right there, at least 100k, most of them over 200k. So let me tell you, this is how I spent my Friday evening. As soon as the event was released, I had my filter set to fantasy hockey, and I put in the amount of coins that I have as the maximum buy now range. It took a couple hours, I have to admit, to get a car to show up, but when it did, I knew I was going to be the first person to get this card problem it's actually not this card because i wasn't entirely sure if this card was going to be a good deal because you know he's a non-nhl card i'm like how much is he actually going to go for so yeah i missed out on that 40k uh kusa guy he goes for 100k so that would have been like 50 or 60k in seconds but nope i didn't do it lesson learned 
But the reason why I would be the first one to see this card, because with these filters, I'm only seeing the fantasy cards. 146K, anything under that, I knew was going to be a great deal. And I'm spamming Y and A, or triangle and X if you're on the PlayStation, because as soon as a card pops up, I was able to click on it and be in the menu to go and buy it now. Your regular card flippers need to flip between the pages and then go over to the card and then click on the card to be in the same menu that I was. So I had an extra like two or three seconds to decide whether or not I was gonna buy that card. And it was at that point that Bay showed up. A 75K Shea Weber, I was over that. And once it said item purchase was successful, I was bouncing around my room because I just made a ton of coins. So then I went into the fantasy hockey cards just to see if there are any currently out there. I don't think there was, but they were all going for like 300, 400K. So I ended up listing the Shea Weber for 400K. You can tell I was excited because I had an extra nine making it 3.9 million. Glad it wasn't the other way around and made it 40K. Now he didn't exactly go for that. I settled on 230K because well, I still made coins. So with that flip, I made a little over 150k coins minus tax with one card. The seconds part, I mean, it depends on how you view it. It took me seconds to buy him and list him up on the auction house. So that's how I viewed it. But yeah, one flip is all it takes to make a ton of money. Once I showed the Say Weber, I went at it again. Problem. I found this Milan Lucic and uh, believe it or not, he doesn't go for that much more. He was the cheapest price listed, so then I had to actually lower my buy now maximum just a little bit below that just so that I can try to get other cards. And then of course another Lucic pops up. Great. Fantastic. I guess what I'm trying to say with this group of clips is you can do this tactic on any kind of cards that come out. If you want to do this exact same thing with the icons or the master set items, you could find success there as well. There are a lot of people that mistakenly put up some really quality cards for a cheap price. And this tactic, this trick, is the fastest way that you're going to be able to see those cards. Now, you can stare at the screen while you're doing this and be bored out of your mind, but I was actually watching a movie while doing this. Just spam Y and A with one hand on the controller, playing NHL 19 on one monitor, and then the monitor next to it having the movie. So that as soon as something appeared, my attention went to the game and I bought the card. Here are some other noteworthy flips that I got. Max Pacioretty for 18K. Yeah, he, uh, he goes for about 30K. Up next is Brad Marchand, just all by his lonesome self for 36K. Notice the filters that I'm using, 86 to 99 overall with about the money that I have. So I was able to flip this Marchand for like another 10K or so. So that 100k isn't really the only 100k that I made. Going into the master set players, notice how all of these guys are going for 400k or so, except for this Carter Hart. Carter Hart, Hart, Hart. Not this again. I was able to sell him for 100k more than the price that I got him for. He is a goalie, but he's the best goalie in the game right now. And that is some solid profit. And you know, and I don't want to leave out the guys who don't have a whole lot of coins to flip cards with because these methods are possible at any level. You just need to know what to look for. Primetime cards, this Nick Suzuki goes for, well, about 2.5K, maybe 2K. And there's one just sitting here for 1K. So, you know, we got to scoop them up and sell them for 2K. Not a whole lot of profit, but I mean... You take it, you know, it can feed my players like four or five contracts. So that, that's nice. That's a lot of a lot of bread on the table here. I'm trying to win a bid war for this Mike Pekka because 10K at the time was really cheap for him. He was going for 20K. So after I bid on him, I went into my my bids and I spammed the right trigger to refresh until I eventually won him. Mike Pekka is so special just because of his high face off rating at 98 face offs. He's always going to be desirable for people who need to do those challenges or just need a third, fourth line center, at least until other cards come out anyway. So you guys remember that budget goalies video that I made? I'd like to point out I didn't make this series of purchases because of that video. But I apologize in advance if it looks like I'm making profit just based on what I'm telling people to do. I was researching goalies and I came across this Sean Burke card. And I'm like, what the hell? 
a six foot four goalie with 66 aggression oh my god this dude is like a secret weapon and nobody knows about it that's why it's secret and i instantly knew that the value of this card is gonna be a lot higher than the amount that he's going for even if i don't know the price yet because i'm sitting here staring at this card but i just i just had to go in and just scoop up these sean burks because under 10k is a ridiculously cheap price for one of the best goalies in the game right now. I ended up selling a lot of these Sean Burke cards from anywhere between 18 and 25k. So I made a ton of profit just from them alone. But the point of these clips that I want to mention to you guys is you got to do your own research. Because people, they don't know how good cards are. At least not when they're released. If something makes these cards stand out like the Mike Pekka with 98 face-offs, they're going to go for a really high amount. And don't be afraid to just buy up all of the cards or most of the cards because you think that this card should be going for higher. When there are no copies of this card on the auction house, you're the one that sets the price. With that said, that's how I made 100k coins in seconds. Actually, it's how I made like 700k coins in the past week. Probably more than that now that I think about it. I just have a bunch of cards that are waiting to be sold. Point is, I hope these tips will help you guys make coins as well so that you can be free to play in Hockey Ultimate Team just like me. Stay tuned for more videos on how I play the auction house on this channel in the future.